Absorbed by my surroundings and the gravity of the labor, I locked myself in the unfettered pleasures of a scent. I think I read this. And for an hour or two, I actually forgot to be afraid. All right, so malevolent. So the mountains feel like they're against him, right? Three quarters of the way to Camp One, Hall remarked at a rest stop that the ice ball was in better shape than he'd ever seen it. Throughout the bloody freeway this season, but only slightly higher at 19,000 feet, the ropes brought us to the base of our, of a gargantuan, perilously balanced rack. As massive as a 12-story building, it loomed over our heads, swinging 30 degrees past vertical. All right, so if the vertical is straight up and down, it's leaning past that. They had to climb up one that was like this way. So if they're climbing, they're on the same side. Oh, uh -uh. oh. Dang. Uh, the route followed a natural catwalk that angled sharply up the overhanging face. We would have to climb up and over the entire off-kilter tower to, ex to escape its threatening tonnage. So, tonnage. Tonnage. Um, it's size, so like a ton is the root word there. So just, it's threatening tonnage, like that if it fell, it's just tons that would fall on you. So and it's threatening, like it's hanging there about to fall over. It does look like it's going to kill you. Safety, I understood, hinged on speed. I huffed toward the relative security of this rack's crest with all the haste I could muster. But since I wasn't acclimatized, my fastest pace was no better than a crawl. Every four or five steps, I'd have to stop, lean against the rope, and suck desperately at the thin, bitter air, searing my lungs in the process. Right, what about acclimatized? It's another one of our words. All right, adjust or get used to. So if you acclimatize to something, I know, I think I missed a slide. Oh. So just pretend that the next one's not there. Adjust? Acclimatize, adjust, yeah. So when it first gets, for like those of you who play a sport, when it first gets really hot in the summer, you have to get used to running outside. Because it's so hot, you can get, you know, you can get heat stroke. Yeah. It's starting to get there. So it's the same thing with the cold. So why couldn't he breathe? Why was it hard for him to breathe? Because there's because the air condition. Yeah, the air. So part of it's the air is really cold, and the higher up you get, it's thinner, so there's less oxygen. All right. So he and he's not used to it because he's just a rider and not a climber. I reached the top of the serac without it collapsing and flopped breathless onto its flat summit. My heart pounded like a jackhammer. A little later, around 8.30 a.m., I arrived at the top of the ice fall itself, just beyond the last of the Serac. The safety of Camp One didn't supply much peace of mind, however. I couldn't stop thinking about the ominously tilted slab a short distance below, and the fact that I would have to pass beneath its faltering bulk at least seven more times if I was going to make it to the summit of Everest. Climbers who snidely denigrate this as the yak route, I decided, had obviously never been through the Kamu ice ball. All right, so raise your hand if you want to sum up the story in one sentence. What's the action? What's happening to action? Uriel and then I'll let Charles. Wait, um, this guy is trying to climb kind of up some mountain. Yeah. Yeah, Charles. Trying to get up and down Mount Everest. A guy trying to get up and down. Yeah. Good. Alright, so what I want you to do is flip your paper over, take about four minutes. I want you to draw the ice ball, what you see when you have when we've read through all this. Alright? The ice ball, that's what this is called. Well, how do you see it? The ice ball? The ice it's called the ice ball, so the mountains. The seracs, those high peaks of ice. <laughs> Just four quick